Okay, I'm here today for another edition of the Penn Roundup. Um, I'm joined by former famous Quaker running back, Rich Camizio. Um, Rich, can you introduce yourself to everybody out there? Sure. Uh, my name is Richard Camizio, better known on campus as Cosmo. Um, I'm from a small town in Connecticut called New Fairfield. Uh, I was, I came in uh, in the class of 1983, graduated in 1987, uh, was in the Wharton School, studied finance. Um, so I think I remember telling you this this past year, um, when I, I think, um, you know, my father was at Penn for about 50 years. And, um, you know, he used to take it, when you're at Penn faculty member, there's not many freebies. <laughs> Ticket to the football games were some of the freebies. And so I used to go see all the games. i have seen a lot of your games played when I was a kid. That's and I think the other thing that was funny, and I mentioned this, my dad used to bring home the Daily Pennsylvania with all you and your uh, teammates on there. And yeah. some of the things you did on and off the field. And he used to always tell me, these are your role models, Brian. These yeah. are your future <laughs> role models, you know, be well, like them. It's interesting because just this past summer, you know, I'm having a discussion with my two boys who, as you know, play on the team currently. And, uh, you know, back in the day, you know, my junior and senior year at Penn, I'm riding around campus on an unregistered, uninsured, <laughs> unlicensed motorcycle all around the streets of Philadelphia around campus and no helmet, you know, and um, it took until my senior year. I'm, I'm riding down Locust Street one day, going to practice, driving down towards Franklin Field, and sure as hell, a Philly cop puts his lights on, pulls me over. I got my Pennsylvania football sweatshirt on or whatever, and he's like, license, registration, insurance card, this and that, and I'm like, officer, I don't have any of them. And he's, <laughs> like, he's like, you're driving around with no registration, no light. I was like, yeah. And he looks at my sweatshirt and he goes, you play on the football team here? And I was like, yeah. And he looks up in the air a second. He looks at me again and he goes, can you get me four tickets to the game this Saturday? <laughs> and I was like, well, Mr. you let this slide. I'll get you season tickets the rest of the year. I was like, you know, yeah. but it's just like, you know, I mean, back in the day, I mean, on a rainy day, we'd have 19,000 people and, you know, on a good day, you know, mid fifties or whatever. And, um, you know, it's just, it's funny because funny and sad at the same time, you know, you go to the games now and, you know, you're on a good day. If you have seven, 8,000, 9,000 people, I don't know what the number is, but. I, I um, remember, uh, we'll talk about a little bit more, but I remember sometimes when there was one year when they uh, tore down the goalpost yeah. and I remember walking the goalpost up um, Walnut or no, uh, Spruce. Spruce. Yeah. Throwing them in uh, the Schuylkill, right? Well, they did that. Too. Well, that's another story. Uh, but somehow I remember them going up and, and they threw them in the Schuylkill and then everyone walked up Spruce um, to campus and you would look, the people would be holding the babies in the hup as you went by you know having the babies wave their arms and yeah. stuff you know um i also think it's interesting when i was down this past weekend there's no more bicycles it's all the electric all scooters. Scooters. yeah i was like holy cow you know uh brian i'm on my third what third or fourth scooter because uh one of my boys he keeps getting his stolen so it's like i'm surprised not, not i'm stolen more i know uh, I know coach hates them because there's been a couple injuries with kids like. Yeah, but we're not supposed to talk about that, you know? Yeah, I hate we're, we're staying positive, right? Okay. Okay. Um, tell me, how'd you get the pen? Who recruited you? Yeah, so it's kind of an interesting story. Um, you know, I came from a very blue collar town in, in Connecticut where I'd say 65% of my graduating class in high school did not go to college. And ironically, uh, I was the first person in my entire school history to go to an Ivy League school. Um, so, you know, back up to my junior high, high school and, you know, I was military bound because I was uninterested in any trade that any of our fathers did that most of our, my friends were doing, you know, whether you're taking wood shop or metal shop or electronics classes in a public high school just prepping to go and work with your father when you got out of high school. 
And it, it was just so unappealing to me that I thought my out would have been like a military career. Um, so, you know, then fast forward to my sophomore, junior year of high school, I started getting recruited, uh, just, you know, letters from coaches all over the country. And, uh, you know, my parents who were not college educated, um, you know, my, they, they were saying, you know, you'd be crazy if you didn't take advantage of this opportunity. And, um, so then, um, you know, a guy by the name of Coach Lyons was the Connecticut recruiter back then. He, he currently works at uh, the University of New Hampshire. <laughs> it's so funny because like seven years ago, I saw him at one of these showcase camps uh, when my boys were in high school. And, um, you know, I, I mean, whatever, 35, 40 years passed. And it was like, it was like I saw him yesterday. It was like we're having a conversation. <laughs> But anyway, so Coach Lyons uh, was very instrumental, as well as my current boss of 32 years, George Weiss, whom everybody in uh, the Penn football community should know. Yeah, we got to protect uh, George this year. Yeah. We got to really protect him. I know, I get a lot of shit for that, but he knows I wasn't recruited to block for current. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, my stuff. My, so my sophomore year, which was obviously rookie year for varsity back then, um, during uh, the beginning of summer camp, Coach Burnt, the head coach at the time, tells Coach Jackson, my running back coach, to put me on the wing for PAT field goal. And, uh, you know, I'm a sophomore. <laughs> Get on the wing. Across the ball from me is number 20, my best friend from Penn, uh, Gavin O'Connor. And he, on the snap of the ball, he literally runs over me, puts his foot on my chest and runs past me and blocks the PAT. And uh, Coach Burnt on looked, PAT much more after that, huh? <laughs> Coach Burnt looked at Coach Jackson. He said, get Cosmo off PAT. <laughs> that, was, that was the end of my special teams career. <laughs> when you were at uh, Penn, the records are like impressive. Three straight Ivy yeah. titles. Um, three straight league MVP winners. Yeah. Um, can you tell me about the uh, uh, the dynasty that was built then? Before I ask you about maybe you know what is my favorite win? Yeah. So um, you know you left out also that all three of our, us Bushnell winners were also all three of the Ivy League Rookie of the Years back to back to back. Yeah. So you know it, it's pretty impressive from my senior year of high school. Uh, when I got recruited and they won the first championship with uh, Mike Christiani was one of the captains who was my recruiting host, um, also a Connecticut kid. But, um, it, you know, it, it's pretty impressive because, you know, you look back then when we weren't bound to the NCAA rules of only recruiting 30 kids. So my, my incoming freshman class I mean, we had 115 kids. I mean, we probably had eight or nine running backs just in my freshman class, you know. So, you know, you get this hodgepodge of kids. And, you know, at the time you had Coach Dobes who was heavily recruiting the Chicago area. So we had a lot of Chicago Catholic League kids and, you know, the Pennsylvania Catholic League kids such as Tommy Gilmore and those types of kids. But, I mean, to, 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 ha to be an underclassman on a team where, you know, you had Tim Chambers and Tommy Gilmore and Ross Armstrong, who went on to play in the USFL um, on the defensive side of the ball. And, you know, my mentor, my sophomore year, uh, you know, Steve Wartman, who was the starting running back at the time, um, just, you know, it, it's just such a, like, humbling, you know, just – time and 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 you know like just something that you know i cherish and i i mean i think about it almost every day and you know uh, especially just given the fact that i've been so involved with the program for you know obvious reasons but um you know it's just it, it's just you know i feel so blessed to have been in that era where you know the dynasty lasted for five consecutive years and then, you know, you go to my senior year where obviously we were undefeated and we set all kinds of, I, I think, league re team records as well as, you know, pen team records and individual records. And there was so much going on. And, you know, my one of my offensive linemen became a first team All-American. And, you know, um, then you had 
our tight end, Brett, the following year get drafted into the NFL. And so you're surrounded by just such talent. And, you know, I, I mean, rightfully so, I think Coach I'd probably be the first to say, you know, he probably couldn't get most of us into Penn nowadays. Yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I'm not allowed to say that? I don't know, man. I mean, I'm one of those kids, well, too. And I think you we know, all listen, done well. I mean, I mean, back in my day, it was like, you know, Coach Burnt goes to the to the dean of admissions and says, you know, I have faith in this kid that he can do the job academically, even though his scores may be subpar or his GPA. But we'll take care of him. We'll make sure he gets to, oh, okay, <laughs> he's in, you know. Nowadays, you need. You need the academic index and all that stuff. Yeah. Certain bands. But, I mean, the thing is, is I think, you know, that what makes it special is you got to get the kids who want to make it work and be successful. You know? Sure. Um, well, we, we certainly had that. I mean, you know, we listen, I mean, you, you know, winning is an attitude, right? And like yeah. once it's once it started in, in the fall of 1983 and I came in and and, you know, it was just it was already there and it, was, it started and you, know, you could see it like there was excitement and you had you had the backing of of the campus community everybody was coming to the games and it was like it was like a big thing and so it just fed on itself and you know i i think that that i think what stopped it was just the turnover on the coaching staff you know we didn't have the consistency you know nobody was there in place i mean coach zubrow my head coach who went 10 and 0 you know I think it was his one and only year that he coached, or did he coach another year? He was there for two years, if I remember. Okay. He went good. And then Gary still took over. And yeah. then Bagnoli came in after that. Yeah, and he ran a dynasty himself. Yeah. But, but um, you, you know, I, I mean, I, I really believe that, you know, when you're, when you're winning and you're surrounded by, you know, your best friends – I mean, it doesn't get any better. And, and, you know, it just, it makes it so much easier to go to practice every day. It makes it funner to be at practice, goof around, but yet, you know, you gotta I mean, work Brian, hard and play hard. I, I mean, I could literally remember being part of a team where, you know, you walk on the field for warmups and you could look across the 50 yard line and they already looked defeated. They knew they were going to get their asses kicked by us. Yeah. And, you know, it's just like such a great feeling, you know, and, and it's like, you know, and it was just a matter of, you know, going through your execution and making sure, you know, you didn't have this hiccup that, you know, you, where you beat yourself. It's so. funny you mention that because over three years, correct me if I'm wrong, 25, three and one, right? Uh, yeah. And we had two, only one Ivy League loss. Very impressive. What was the and, atmosphere in the locker room? How'd you keep everyone focused? Yeah, I mean, again, you know, I think it started with the captains who were, you know, very vocal and and opinionated. And, you know, I mean, you know, you think about a guy like Tommy Gilmore, right? If, if Tommy, nobody- I still hear to, his voice in my head. Yeah, nobody wanted to piss Tommy off, especially- if you were running summer camp and you're a running back who's like half his size, nah. And <laughs> like the, the thing, thing that's so I... funny about Tommy is, I mean, I've seen pictures of him and his brother on social media. Yeah. His brothers call him Tiny. I know. Well, his brother, yeah, I know. I know, but I, I mean, you know, listen. So, you know, it just, again, winning begets winning, you know, and it's like- you, It's you an just, attitude. It, yeah, you have that attitude and it's like, you gain that confidence and whether it's, you know, a guy like coach burnt, who was, you know, very conservative, very quiet, you know, never raised his voice, um, had that Southern drawl and just, you know, really spoke even keel, whether we were getting killed by army at West point or, you know, destroying whomever in the league. But, um, I think it really just stems from everybody being committed to the program, whether you're the fourth string guy who's running scout defense for me to prep for Yale, you know, 
yeah, you deserve your ring too. You, you're never going to be on the field, but you're doing your job. And, you know, you're part of the legacy, regardless of whether or not, you know, your name is in the DP or not, you know, and it's just, and everybody was committed and everybody, everybody knew that everybody loved that, you know, and there was no bickering in the locker room. There was no, you know, fighting amongst us. And it was just, it was just a, a unity that was happened. So can we talk about my favorite win in Penn history? Go ahead. October 18th, 1985. <laughs> yeah. Penn versus Navy at Annapolis. Yeah. Tell me so, two things. Who are the leaders, what they did, yeah. and um, more importantly, what was the bus ride back home like? Yeah, so everybody loves to talk about the, the game that I left uh, in the second quarter with a, with a hamstring pull, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take you through it. So, um, you, you know, obviously we were – severe underdogs going into the week and you know i mean this is back when the ivy league were on the were on the sheets or whatever you call it, the, the betting sheets right so i mean i i can't remember if we were 17 or 19 point underdog to to navy and um you know i mean our defense that year was just you know filled with real killers i mean you know you had our captain brad hines playing linebacker you had AJ, Jeff Fortin, hip and steel on, on the line. You know, you had Donald Wilson, who, you know, was one of the cornerbacks, Fangmeyer at it, safety. So there was AJ a lot and of Jeff, AJ and Fortna. Yeah. So, you know, you had you had a situation where basically the whole entire country was not really with us they were you know they, they 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 were putting their money on navy and the only people that really believed in ourselves were us and and, and you know we were fighting practicing hard all week i remember having different like posts up in the locker room and you know whether it was the 19 point spread or you know what they were saying down in annapolis and you know how they were looking past us to play Notre Dame or whoever they were had to, on their schedule the following week. Um, and then, you know, I, I mean, I, I can remember even like while I was playing, while I was in the game, um, you know, I, I felt like I was running well. I mean, I, I was getting five, six, seven, eight yard clips. And, you know, I, I didn't feel like it was, I, I felt like it was just another game. Like I, I wasn't intimidated. They're definitely bigger and faster. I mean, just like when we play Army. But, you know, we, we were, we, I thought we were executing well. Now, to get to your question, who were the leaders of that game? I mean, to me, clearly it would be, you know, Jim Krachikia, the quarterback, as well as Brent Novoselsky, the tight end, who I, I think had like three touchdowns, right? Yeah. Um, and then the, the, the seal of, the, the, you know, the, the, the one that broke their back was, uh, you know, I mean, call him a third string running back, if you will. Um, but Jim Bruni came in and caught, you know, like a screen pass or an out pass or something and, um, you know, ran for a touchdown. And that that really secured our victory. Um, the bus ride back, you know, it's like it's kind of a blur. But I mean, you know, I, I, I was kind of nursing my hamstring, but I was, you know, I'm all psyched up. I, I will tell you the best funny story about, about people going home, I will say, not necessarily the team, but, you know, my current boss, George Weiss, you know, he's as elated as anybody, you know, and he obviously was at the game. So he, he heads to the local airport to fly back to Hartford <laughs> to, to, to return to his house. And, you know, I, I don't know if he was three sheets to the wind or whatever, <laughs> but he, he boards a plane and as soon as he got on the plane, he told, he alerted the stories that he was buying everybody on this plane <laughs> a cocktail because his alma mater pen just kicked Navy's ass. So they were, the lady's like, great, sit down after we, after we level off, I'll, I'll tell everybody, uh, you know, you're, you're buying them drinks. So 20 minutes later, they're 20, 30,000 feet up in the air. The lady comes on to announce and she says, you know, and we'll be in Charlotte, North Carolina in about an hour and a half. 
And George looked at the lady and goes, Charlotte, you got on the wrong plane. <laughs> I mean, you can't make this stuff up. It was like, but I, I well, we definitely got to get him some bodyguards this year, don't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. Hey, tell me about the last time you played at Franklin Field and what you remember. Yeah, um, so the last game I played at Franklin Field. Now you're really testing my memory, but I, I want to say it was Harvard, and it was kind of around the time where you know I was close. Um, to break in the, the, the rushing records and that type of thing. So, um, you know, there, there was a lot of like, you know, emotion from, you know, my parents, my offensive line and, you know, my running mate, Chris Flynn, obviously. And, um, you know, it was I, the I, line. It was the line. Yeah. So you had, uh, Marty Peterson, Jim Panzini, um, God, you're going to test, uh, Steve Bonato was the center. Um, you had Scott Ernst at right tackle, I believe. And, uh, <laughs> Wilkes maybe was the, the other guard, man. You're really testing me here, <laughs> Brian. Okay. That's um, fine. Keep going. But, what was the last game like? You know, it was, it was a little, you know, um, you know, you, you're running around knowing like that you, you've been part of this dynasty and like Franklin Field has been your home. I mean, you know, we, we practiced on Franklin Field as well. We didn't have Penn Park to, you know, have the opportunity to go down there. To, but, um, you know, to, to, to be there, you know, and like have, having been so dominant for like, you know, your stint at, at wearing a varsity um, uniform for the red and blue with so much history, so much football history of, you know, Heisman people and, you know, all pros and, you know, the, the double decker stadium. And, you know, I, I remember like just being like caught up with coach Stafiri in particular, because him and I were buddies, you know, Italians and, you know, like you're sitting there going, you know, we still have one more game to go because we played Cornell away for the last game for the title. But yet you knew you'd never be on Franklin Field again. And, you know, you're kind of patting each other on the ass going, wow, you know, we, 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 we made our mark. We, we set our legacy. We have one more game to do this, to be undefeated. You know, Ivy League champs, five consecutive years outright, three for our varsity career, only losing one time at Harvard. Our only other losses were both to, to a really strong Army team, one which went on to beat Michigan State in the Cherry Bowl that year. Um, so we we felt as though we had done we, we had exceeded our expectations of what our recruit recruiting coaches had expected of us. They, they, they made their bet on us. And, and like I said earlier, you know, maybe we were a little subpar and they had responsibilities um, academically that is, but you know, we got we we did our job and, and I mean we, I like to, I like to look at it like this. I mean, all of us who went through that program we made the program better. Yeah. But the program also made us better. I mean, yeah. I really think if I didn't go to Penn, I would end up being a teacher somewhere, but instead I'm a radiation oncologist right. treating cancer. I mean, we all rose up, you know. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, it's like you know, I, like I tell my kids all the time, it's like, you know, I mean, P Penn isn't a school for everybody. And, you know, I mean, I don't, you know, if you want to be a school teacher or a, a, a police officer, you know, I mean, we need them. And, you know, I think, I think school teachers are some of the most underpaid employees in the, in the world, to be honest with you. But, you know, it was just, it was my calling. Like for some reason, I, I mean, I give. I'll tell you, 
So, you know, coming out of high school, you, you know, I, I mean, I, I was getting early recruited by major college football. I, I mean, I, I want to say my senior year of high school, I led the nation in rushing in high school. But the only, my, my, my downfall was I was 5'9", 180 pounds, and I played at this rinky-dink high school in Connecticut, right? So, no, you know, back then there was no showcase camps or anything like that. But then lo and behold, right before I was going to Penn for pre-freshman program, um, my recruiter from Penn State called me and he said, I'm going to be honest with you. One of our running backs backed out. He was like, you, you were the next guy on the list. He's like, four-year scholarship, you know, no questions asked. He's like, just take the weekend to think about it, talk to your parents, and let me know next week. So I got my bag packed for Penn. And, you know, Joe Paterno, Obviously Italian, you know, there's a lot of connection there. I obviously declined, opted to be kind of a big fish in a smaller pond, so to speak. Um, but, you know, I couldn't help but think, you know, as I'm sitting there after we just went 10 and 0, I was in the dorm room in January, having just gotten back from Christmas break. And I'm watching Penn State upset upset the University of Miami for the national championship, you know, down in the Fiesta Bowl. And um, part of me was like, you know, I could have been there somewhere. I'm not sure exactly <laughs> what role it would have been, but it just wasn't my call. You know, Penn was my call. And, you know, it set up a legacy for my kids. You know, I, I have four kids and they all went to Penn. And, you know, my two boys are on the team currently, but, you know, I had two girls who graduated in 2019 and 2021. And, you know, I, I'm not sure they would have fell in love with Penn if it weren't for, you know, me having gone there and, you know, having taken them there at time, various times in their high school career. So, you know, I think everything happens for a reason. Quick and, question about that though, you ready? Yeah. I went to Penn. My two sisters also went to Penn. Is my family like yours where XY is the inferior genotype or no? I don't know, man. It's like, <laughs> my sisters were much smarter than me, you know? Yeah, you know? I mean, well, again, like, you know, it's, it's, it's one thing, you know, to be recruited to play football and be, you know, a band one, whatever they call them now. Yeah, yeah. I band. You know, kid and have the opportunity you know I, I i i'm i'm thinking i would have been a band one at the most you know yeah. so you know again coach burnt did a lot for me and and he 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 confided in me to to not not to embarrass him in a, in, in a way up campus right so you know i tell my kids all the time it's like coach burnt was genius because for my freshman and sophomore year he basically put a ball and chain on my ankle and he said, <laughs> you're going to do your work. Brian, literally 20 hours mandatory tutoring every week, plus 20 hour work study job. I, I didn't have time to do anything but football, sleep, study and eat for yeah. two years. And once he saw my GPA after two years, he released, you know, the, the tutoring. And, you know, he, he was like, OK, he's like, but if you get in trouble again, you're going right back to tutoring. And, you know, lo and behold, I graduated, you know, my senior year, my, one of my biggest accomplishments from my perspective was be, being named uh, first team academic All-American my senior year. Good where I you. Yeah, I graduated, uh, you know, Wharton with honors. And it wasn't easy. You know, I, I went in my freshman year. I'm sitting in the econ class, macroeconomics. Everybody in the class had economics in high school. I'm taking freaking like wood shop. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I mean, like, I, like the whole, the whole concept to me was just so like foreign that like, you know, I, I would, I could have easily like fallen way behind, but, you know, coach Burnt made sure that didn't happen. And, you know, and, you know, I can't say enough about my relationship with George and just, you know, how supportive he had been through, you know, not only my playing career, but then, you know, Again, you know, I, I didn't go to work for him right out of college, but, you know, um, it was like five years after I graduated and I've been there ever since. So that leads me to my next question. You ready? Yeah. Since you left Penn, 
What have you been doing? Who do you keep up with? <clears throat> yeah, so when I first left Penn, um, I was a pit trader in the commodities world down in uh, downtown Manhattan. Um, I worked for just a private company, a couple wealthy guys, and um, was living in New York City. Got a call from George out of the blue, and he said, I want you to consider coming and work for me. And I was like, and move to Hartford, Connecticut from New York City? And he's like, yeah. I was like, nah. I was like, I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> so he's like, listen. He's like, I'm coming to the city tomorrow for dinner. He's like, meet me for dinner. He's like, I promise you I'll make you an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> right? He Brian, sounds Italian. 20, 24 hours later, I'm sitting in a Manhattan restaurant scratching my head, which wasn't bald at the time, and I'm going, I can't believe I'm moving to Hartford, Connecticut. I was like, <laughs> so, so, so yeah, we, uh, <clears throat> I, you know, and that was in 1991, and I've been employed with him ever since. Um, who I keep in touch with in my class, uh, Rob Andrews, who works, you know, in, in my business. Um, I still speak to AJ uh, occasionally. Um, uh, Richie Cohen, actually, I just recently moved to Florida. So Richie Cohen lives right around the corner from me. So I've seen him a few times of late. But, you know, I, you know again, with going to the my boys games, uh, you know, I see like kind of a rotation of some of the alumni and it's just great to catch up. There are some other guys who, you know, have played that have currently have boys on the roster as well. So, you know, like Colin Abernathy, who was a couple of years behind me, um, you, you know, and our boys played high school football together as well. So I, I've seen him a lot, um, <clears throat> you know, so there, there, there's been a, 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 you know, then I'm on a group chat with, you know, these guys from my class, you know, Kenny Saunders basically runs it. Um, but, you know, there's probably 40, 50 guys on there. Is there anything you could change or memorialize about your career, Penn? Anything you'd want to do different? Um, my stint at Penn, you know, not really. I, I mean, I, I, you know, again, I, I feel blessed. I, I mean, I had a great run. I had a great opportunity. You know, I made the most of it, I think. You know, I, I mean, I wish I were, you, you know, uh, injury-free career, um, but that doesn't, that rarely happens in football, especially as a running back. Um, but, you know, um, again, I, I don't have any regrets or anything I wish I changed. Yeah. No. So I, I work this, hard. You know, I work as hard as I know the answer to uh, this one. Um, cause I know I, you know, like you see, I, I see you at the games. I try to get as many games as I can. Yeah. It's that in the palester is my vice in life, you know? Yeah. Um, but you know, what are your plans for the upcoming season, especially with your two sons being on the team this year? Yeah. So, um, you're going to go to the I'm, road games too. I am. I, I booked all my, uh, flights already. And, uh, I, you know, Again, I'm living vicariously for my boys right now. You know, I mean, I, I get, I get super excited to to watch Penn football. You know, um, I think everybody in the program was kind of uh, disappointed with with last year uh, performance. So, you know, with some subtle changes, including a, a new offensive coordinator, we're gonna, uh, you know, uh, you know, my son just kind of text me like last week and he said, I, I've never seen so much, you know, optimism um, in the Penn football program since he's been around it. So I'm encouraged. I'm actually heading up there uh, Saturday to just to drop in and say hello, maybe catch a practice and uh, see them wind down uh, be, before they start preparing for, for, you know, the season. Um, and, you know, I, I, the road games, I mean, I, I wouldn't miss them. Uh, you know, I just enjoy being part of it. I know it's, you know, in a couple of years, I'm not going to have it. So, I, I, you know, I, I just make the most of it. And again, you know, it's very humbling to see, you know, in particular my older son who wears my number and plays running back as well. Um, 
you know, I am forever grateful to the to Coach Priori and uh, you know his staff for you know allowing them the opportunity to to wear the red and blue. Yeah, well said, well said. Um, so on that, I'm going to wrap up this edition of the roundup. Unless you got anything more to add. No, I think we okay. covered a lot. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. Um, and I hope to see at many of the, I'm going to try and make every game, you know, home game this year. Yeah. Uh, my kids are getting old, so I may have some commitments, but I really love going to see the games. Um, me so too. And, I, I, and more importantly, I, I also love to see a lot of the uh, former players in the, in the tent, in the pregame tent, uh, in the horseshoe. And, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I've become closer to guys like Brian Keyes, and, you, you, you know, in, in, in the last couple of years than I had. And, um, you know, I, I just love seeing all these guys who, you know, have set their own legacy there and, um, you know, have made contributions or what, you know, whether they've broken records and whatnot. Yeah, but we got to get people who are going to protect George Weiss. You know? <laughs> That's the main thing. We need bigger people. No yeah. more, you know, people my size, you know, not, you know. I think it should be like, you know, <laughs> I don't know, like, like something mandatory, like uh, an early alumni, you know, the, the first two years out. You're George's linemen, wife's bodyguards for the yeah, home games. You need a rotation of linemen, both defense and offense. It doesn't matter. Like you just oh, gotta, my God. You got to stand around the owner. You know? yeah, the team owner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I love them. I still remember, like, I came after being away. I came back to um, a game, and uh, I thought I bought tickets, or someone had left tickets for me. So I went to the will call to pick up tickets to get in, and uh, they said, you know, they, they didn't have any tickets for my name. So I turn around, and George is standing there. He goes, "I hadn't seen him in like 25 years, maybe." Yeah. He goes, "Hey, Brian, how you doing?" I go, "Okay." He goes, "Do you need tickets?" He goes, "Here, take Alley's." You know, um, <laughs> it is yeah. what it is. But on that note, I think we'll wrap this up. And I just want to say thank you again. Sure. Right. Man. Stay Appreciate safe and I'll see you soon. Okay. Take care.